So we believe that what Jesus did is true. We all in here, we believe it. But faith in, in verse 17 is a noun. See, when you read it, you're thinking, I got faith, meaning a verb, action, like I believe. It's not that. It's a noun. It's more than that. It's more than believing in the, it's, it's more. It is believing in the truth. Okay? So you say, wait a minute. So if faith is a noun and it means that it's more than believing in the truth, then what are you saying? Here's what I'm saying. So it reads like this. Faith being a noun and a noun being a person, place, a thing, right? So from truth to truth. So let's read it. For therein is righteousness of God revealed from truth to truth. And as it is written, the just shall live by truth. What is or who is, if faith is a noun, who is the truth? Jesus is the truth. And so now here's the deal that your faith is not just about believing, but it's about having something believing in who believing in truth. The faith is Jesus. Truth, truth is who you believe in. Not, not just this esoteric. What you do is your belief is in Jesus and Jesus alone. The noun, the person, the person of grace. That's what that means is, is it allows you to have the righteousness that be any living that Jesus allows you to have right living any wholeness soundness healthy victorious living it will all happen through the person of jesus christ through the now he is faith he is faith alone nothing more nothing less through the person and so i like to call jesus truth truth i say hey truth truth when i speak to god truth truth Because in other words, he's true. There's nothing false about him. He's accurate. He's on time. He's on point. He's never wrong. He's always right. He's never, he never leaves me. He'll never forsake me. He's truth, truth. But let's make this point even more emphatic. Let's make it more emphatic. Here, listen, let's hone the point to, to, to the whole idea of the power of the gospel. Let's make a few closing points. Listen, beware or be aware of self occupation for it is the root of all pain. I'm going to explain it. Just write it down. Beware or be aware of self-occupation for it is the root of all pain. Number two, be aware or beware of sin consciousness. Be aware or beware of sin consciousness. Verse 17 says this. It says, by God, listen, by, God, by the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, not the sin, sinfulness of man. Listen, by God, the righteousness of God is revealed. I mean, by the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, not the sinfulness of man. See, when you preach the gospel, we should not be preaching about people's sin. What we should be preaching is about the gospel, about what Jesus came in his righteousness to take us from out of our sin. See, that's the worst wrong. People come to church and they feel like they have no hope. They can't make it because all we do is preach about how bad you are, how wrong you are, the sin you do. You got to get your life together. You better do better. You can't do better. Paul says your righteousness is nothing but filthy rags. You ain't good enough. You can't do it. I ain't good enough. I can't do it. Let me tell you, when I understood the power of grace, it liberated me. It freed me from being perfect and trying to get it right and do it right and be the best Christian and thinking wrong and doing wrong and all that kind of it freed me because by the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, not the sinfulness of man. But not only that, and this is all in the beware of sin conscience, the, the have you need to have more faith in God's grace than man's sin. Have more faith in God's grace than man's sin. I don't care what people do. I ain't blown out by what sin people do. I don't care what they do to me because I got more faith in the grace and the power of God, the ability to live right, to do right, the ability to overcome than I do in man's sin. So therefore, I don't even hold myself guilty. Now, the Bible says for all those who like, who are kind of, um, um, what's the word? Um, but for those of you who feel like, you know, like, like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you, we going to hold people accountable. And, and here's what they ask Paul. Well, should people just keep on sinning in since we got this grace? He says, God forbid. That you would keep sinning. He said, why? why? Why would you keep sinning? Because if you receive his grace, you can't keep sinning. See, if God is God, and he is, then the power of God is bigger than your sin. 
He's bigger than your sin. He's bigger than your inability to make best decisions all the time. But his grace is not. See, either we believe part of the gospel or we believe, well, maybe we need to get our act together. Mm -mm. Have more faith in God's grace than man's sin. Point three, be aware of the fruit, not the root. Be aware of the fruit, not the root. Obedience is the root for all the blessings in the Old Testament under the law. But under grace, God blesses first and obedience is the fruit. That's very different from what we've been taught. Be aware the Old Testament. Why, why is that important? Because in the Old Testament, remember, go back to Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy, it said, it listed all the blessings and all the curses. If you do this, then you, if you do what you're supposed to do, then guess what? You get blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in, blessed going out. You got cattle on a thousand hills. You got it all. That's where the old name it and claim it come from. But if you now don't do it, you get cursed in the city, cursed in the field. Look at that Old Testament. Look at, look at the picture of it. It is, it is the idea that obedience then was the root, right? If I obey, then I get blessed. But wait a minute. Jesus came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He is the new wine, the New Testament. And he says, because I came, he said, because you received grace, he said, because you receive grace, then obedience becomes a byproduct of that grace. It becomes the fruit of what you do. That's why you ain't got to try to please, stop people pleasing. Stop trying to please people. Stop trying to get it right and be perfect. You can't be. For by grace, you've been saved. For by grace, you'll have a good marriage. For by grace, you'll be a husband. For by grace, you'll be a good wife. For by grace, you'll be a child. For by grace, you'll have wealth. For by grace, you'll be healed. It's only by his grace. I get excited about that. Because it takes the burden off of me from performing because Jesus performed it on the cross. You know why he said it's finished? My gosh, he says it's finished because he said, I've done all that man has tried to do for all these years. And I did it in one fell swoop. I died on the cross for all mankind for now, forever, forevermore. I did it once and for all. Jesus is a bad man. Oh, he's a bad man. He did what people couldn't do all those years. I don't care how great Abraham was, how great David was. I don't care how great all the great patriarchs, none of them could do what Jesus did. That's why I'm amazed at the people who still worship some of the great patriarchs. And though they're great, they worship them as if they can help them, but they can't. Jesus did what no man could do. God blesses first in this New Testament. I love that. Because now it says, that's why now when you feel pressure and you feel like you can't make it, this is why now you have to know the word. Because the word is a word of grace. It tells you what you can be. Listen, if if, if you're you're sick, listen, God said, said, God, you said you would would want me to be in health and prosper even as my soul prospers. Listen, if you're sick, broke, and need physical health, right there in that scripture, 3 John 2, he says, I would have you to be in health and to prosper financially be physically healthy be financially healthy, even as what spiritually healthy, your soul prospers look at that god says you can do that listen he says if you're sick call for the elders and they can lay hands on you and you shall be healed he said you can be healed if you're brokenhearted he came to set the captives and the brokenhearted and to set them at liberty. If you got burdens, he said, take my yoke upon me. It's easy. It's light. He said, he said, I lift the burdens off you and I'll take it. Put the yoke of Jesus on you. See, when you bless me, he says, take my yoke. What is his yoke? A yoke of grace. A yoke of freedom. When you put that on, you, it's light. He said, my burden is a light because it's not about your works. It's about what Jesus done on the cross through his grace. Now you can hold your head up high and you don't have to put your head down for anybody or any circumstance. I don't care what happened to you. I don't care who did it. I don't care what you did to yourself. Hold your head up high and say, God, your grace has saved me. Yeah. Hallelujah. So the Old Testament, you obey first. And blessings is the fruit. The new blessings come first and obedience is the fruit. Why? Why? Romans 5.20. Because grace is greater than sin. I love this. One of my favorite verses. Because let me tell you, this thing will make you jump and scream. Where sin did abound, grace did abound much 
much more. Do y'all understand that? The more, you know what he's saying? The more sin you got, the more grace I supply. The more messed up you are, the more grace you get. The more you need money, the more broke you are, the more grace you get. The more you can't figure out how to work your marriage, the more grace you get for your marriage. Let me tell you, that's good news, y'all. You've been struggling all this time trying to figure out how you're going to work it out. How you going to make that husband act right, that wife do what you want to do. How you going to make your kids, the job, the money. You've been worrying, and God said, don't worry about it. The more troubles, the more grace. Woo! Good news. If I didn't have this mic, I'd run all over this. But I might run out to the yard somewhere in the grass. i just leave it here. Somebody just pick up and keep on preaching. All you got to say is truth, truth, or grace, grace, Jesus, Jesus, and that's a sermon. Praise the Lord. Woo! So I started out saying this. It is painful to be self-occupied. It's painful. Because what the devil does is that the more you think about self and look at it in the light of grace, the more you think about what you can do or what you can't do, the more you get disappointed and frustrated because there comes a point that you reach the ceiling, that the, you can't break through the glass ceiling, the stone ceiling, the uh, concrete ceiling. You can't break through it. It's got you clo- At some point, you get closed in. At some point, we all reach our limit. And what do you do when you reach a limit? That's why, because you're becoming so self-conscious, you can never see Christ and the grace that causes the most pain. Where do you think the root of, of most, um, most illnesses, uh, mental illnesses come from? Self-consciousness, self-occupation, self-looking at self. I'm not good enough. I'm not pretty enough. What people have done to you. And listen, that doesn't give people a pass who've hurt people. And all. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, but what happens when people fall into these illnesses? They fall into them because they're focused on self. If we can ever preach Christ to the brokenhearted, to the mentally ill, I believe we see mentally ill get set free. Matter of fact, in scripture, God preached to the mentally ill, the demonic, and he preached to, and the Bible said, God said, who are you? And he says, we are legion, for we are many. That joker had a thousand minimum of demons living on the side of it. He, I bet a thousand covered pretty about all the mental illness in the DSM-4. That's the, that's the whole uh, mental illness um, Bible, as you so to speak. It tells all the illnesses, all the psychotic and psychosis that people deal with. Do you want to heal psychosis? Preach Jesus, the grace of God. It sets them free. They don't have to focus on their illness. It's painful to think about where you are. That's why people check out. That's why people do drugs. They get their mind off of it. That's why people get involved in sexual activity outside of marriage, inside of marriage, whatever it is. They get involved because at the end of the day, they're self-occupied and self-motivated. Let me give you a great illustration. In John chapter 4, you know the story. Jesus has an encounter with a woman. And this woman was at the well. She comes to this well. John chapter 4, you can read it when you want to, verses 1 through 40. You read the whole story and the whole account. But I want to pull out some key points about this. Here was was Jesus over at the well, and here was this woman at the heat of the day. At a time she was at the well where she shouldn't have been because it it was too hot. You usually don't go. But the reason why she went at that time, this woman at the well, because she didn't want to be laughed at. And mocked at and talked about by the other women who were going to the well to get their water for the day and to bring it back um, to their homes. So she didn't want to be left. So here she was. And on top of that, she was a Samaritan woman. And here was Jesus sitting at the well. Now, by all accounts, Jesus should have never talked to her. Shouldn't have talked to a Samaritan woman. They were unclean, dirty. It, may, it would make you, they, the Jews thought it would make them unclean as well to even be caught. And not only that, not just the fact she was a Samaritan woman, but the fact she was a woman and sitting at the well alone with a woman. That was not appropriate. And here was Jesus just patiently sitting there waiting on this woman. Here she was trying to dodge the other women. Why? Because she was self-occupied with what people would think about her. So she's trying to sneak to the well to get the water she needs. And here is Jesus sitting there waiting, not knowing that now here she is sitting with some man she knew she wouldn't be sitting at. So now she's really being self-conscious because she got some issues. She got issues. So here was this woman in the well and she starts getting the water and she offered Jesus. Jesus offered her. Uh, something to drink. Said, what are you doing? I'm coming to get water. And Jesus 
offered her something to drink and she knew he shouldn't offer because he was, he was a man and all that stuff. And then he said, but if you knew who I was, you would ask me for a drink of water. If you won't so self-occupied with your situation, you would know, you would ask me for a drink of water because I can give you water that will, you will never thirst again. Now, this woman was scared. She was, she was ashamed because then Jesus began to read her email. Um, you know, I know all about you because you got some husbands. As a matter of fact, you got five husbands. The one you got, listen, really ain't your husband, but you're living with him. You're living. He done told her all about her lifestyle. So now she's really ashamed. She's bowing her head. She's, she's frustrated. And then she starts talking about this master. This Jesus. And Jesus turns and says, I am he. And he tells her, go and don't sin anymore. He said, you go on. And when she left that place, guess what she did? The Bible says she ran out and she began to tell all the people about the man she just met at the well. What does that say? It says that this woman came in with the bondage of the Old Testament having to be perfect and live a lifestyle that was not that 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 that, that people could be pleased. And, and when she walked in the community, people would say, oh, yeah, that's a good Christian and that's a good person. And she's done the right thing. And she got but she had issues and she came in there with those issues, but she left with the grace, with the truth. She, truth, truth came to the well. And when she received truth, truth, the gospel and the message of grace, the person of Jesus Christ, that lady does no longer self-occupied what was she she was christ occupied how do we know she told people about jesus look at the difference coming in head bowed worry she left out telling them about jesus let me tell you something i don't care what your problem is if you can't go out of here and tell somebody about jesus because you got issues then you're you're, you're self-conscious you're sin conscious. But if you know that Jesus is truth, truth, and he has set you free and his burdens are light and you got, you take on the spirit of grace and it's not about your works and your performance. You can't perform good enough where your sin abound, grace abound much more Then you know that you can go out and tell people about Jesus. The confidence. This is the doctrine. See, we can't run with the horses. That scripture says, if you get weary with the footman. We get weird with the footman. We're not even knowing basic foundation of the doctrine of our Bible. Let me tell you something. If you will receive this grace, if you receive it to do the things you need to do this week, because we've all struggled with it this week, getting frustrated. I had to remind myself, wait a minute, who do I serve? When I start feeling like I can't do and life is overwhelming, you know what I became? Self-occupied. But when I start thinking about who Jesus is in me, that I can do all things what? Through grace, through truth, truth, through Christ, through Jesus, who is my Lord? Then guess what? I take off that spirit of heaviness and I begin to walk strong and say, you know, I don't care what's going on. I don't care what the deadline is. I don't care what's going on. We're going to get it done. You, who's we? Me and grace. Let's go. That's what we do. This is the doctrine. You got to receive this because if you don't get this, I'm telling you, all the other scripture doesn't matter. If you don't understand that God has made the way that is by his power and his works and his might and not by yours, everything the gospel, you will never receive it because you won't receive your healing. Because you'll look at when you're sick and see that sickness is greater than the power of God. But if you see the power of God is greater than sickness, you will receive your healing. When you look at your bank account and you see you're broke, you don't know how you're going to make it. The bills are due. Yes, I know they're broke and I know the bills are due and I know that it's hard and it's heavy. But who is in charge of your life? Are you self-occupied or are you Christ-occupied? And I get defined about it because at the end of the day, this is where the rubber meets the road as Christians, how we walk. It's the grace of God. No other way. There's no works. No other method. Not how good you are. You can't be good enough. I love that. And that propels me to have the fruit of obedience. Mm-hmm.